Hello guys, in this video we are looking at the major uh, phosphorylation systems and also the dephosphorylation systems that regulate the glycogen metabolism in muscle cells. In this picture, as you can see, this is a huge picture actually. If I move uh, this picture here, you can see this is a lot of different enzymes are coming, a lot of ATPs are involved in this picture uh, and this process actually. So it's a pretty complex process as we are looking at. In this exercise, the active forms of enzymes and inhibitors uh, designated with A are shown in green boxes, while the inactive form of those designated are B are shown in this purple. So all these purple colored enzymes are, in, are in, the, in their inactive forms, and once they are activated, sometimes via the phosphorylation, sometimes via the dephosphorylation, uh, so those activated uh, mode of enzymes are denoted with these green complexes here. Okay. So let's move on. Activation of uh, cyclic APK. Now cyclic AMP uh, dependent protein kinase is called the cycling A uh, or cycling APK or uh, cyclic AMP dependent protein kinase is activated by the binding of cyclic AMP to the regulatory subunit R which causes catalytic subunit C to be released uh, from the monomeric active form. Activation of phosphorylase kinase. Phosphorylase kinase is activated by the phosphorylation by cyclic AMP dependent protein kinase and ATP as you can see in this picture. Maximal activation is achieved when both alpha and beta subunit are phosphorylated as we can see uh, here the subunit are phosphorylated they are not alpha and beta but maximum of phosphorylation can be obtained if they are phosphorylated uh, if the alpha and beta uh, subunits are phosphorylated and in the pro presence of cal calcium ion calcium ion is very very important ingredient for this kind of reaction glycogen phosphorylase is activated by phosphorylation by phosphorylase kinase and also the ATP right after that glycogen synthase is inactivated by phosphorylation by phosphorylase kinase uh, or cyclic APK or cyclic dependent uh, cyclic AMP dependent protein kinase protein or by several other types of kinase so that kinase protein which is responsible for phosphorylating phosphorylase uh, kinase enzyme which is uh, or glycogen phosphorylase enzyme is also responsible for shutting this glycogen synthesis down because that makes totally sense if we need to uh, if we uh, or if we make uh, the activity of phosphorylase uh, glycogen phosphorylase and glycogen synthesis on at the same time that that seems oxymoronic so in these situations we need to shut down one of the system and we need to keep on running another system Glycogen synthase is activated through the dephosphorylation by ph phosphoprotein phosphatase 1. It involves the hydrolysis of this phosphate uh, bond here. Now glycogen phosphorylase and phosph phosphorylase kinase are both inactivated through the dephosphorylation by phosphoprotein phosphatase 1 and both involves the hydrolysis. Phosphoprotein phosphatase 1 is inactivated by the binding of the phosphoprotein phosphatase inhibitor 1. The inactive form of phosphoprotein phosphatase inhibitor 1 is activated through the phosphorylation by cyclic AMP dependent protein kinase and ATP. Phosphor phosphoprotein phosphatase inhibitor 1 is inactive through the dephosphorylation by the phosphoprotein phosphatase 1. So if we uh, in, uh, dephosphorylate this phosphoprotein phosphatase 1, it becomes inactivated. And if we phosphorylate this, it becomes activated.